Welcome to Going Carnivore in Thailand. This is a very serious video that I'm putting out here because this is information that you can use. So let me tell you what we're going to get into here. First, I'm going to tell you a story about what happened in Noi last night. And it isn't the first time it happened, but it's the first time that we figured it out. Next, we're going to talk about potassium again. Then we're going to talk about blood glucose levels. Then we're going to go on to what is hypoglycemia. And what that means as far as your health. We're going to talk about the symptoms of hypoglycemia that I wish I had known before last night. That I wish I had kept up on. Because, well, it's important. It's really important if you're going to be on a carnivore diet. Now, the next chapter is going to be sugar is like Narcon for hypoglycemia. And then we're going to talk about what I'm keeping in stock here at the house to protect against further episodes of hyperglycemia. So let's get right into it. And first, let's talk about Noy's story. Last night, we were sitting down, and I was doing some work, and I looked over, and Noy looked really, really down. I, I, I just say she looked down. And I went over to her, and I asked her if she was all right. And she, she says, I'm so tired. She says, every, every night I feel like I'm so tired. And she just started crying uncontrollably and saying, I'm done with carnivore. I'm so tired. I have no energy. She said, I can't think. And she said that her vision was blurry. She says, my vision, like, goes like this. And, of course, I got a little bit, you know, concerned at this point. And, I mean, she's bawling. She is crying. She says, I don't want to let you down, but I can't do cardboard. No. I can't feel like this all the time. I feel so bad. I got no energy. And, and she wasn't even stringing sentences together again. But it wasn't quite as incoherent as it was when she had super low potassium. So we talked a little bit and, and you know, I tried to get her to quit crying. And then I started thinking about things and when she had potassium and that potassium deficiency a week ago or more, we went to the hospital and her potassium was at 2.5 and it's supposed to be between 3.5 and 5.0. So they kept her overnight, did a CAT scan on her, an EKG and everything like that. And it was serious. But the one thing I wanted to check was I wanted to check her blood sugar. Plus, I've got the, the, the meter to test that. You just stick, stick somebody in the finger like a pin prick and get a drop of blood, put it on the test strip, and the meter reads out what your blood sugar is. Now, I know from having 
blood glucose levels as high as 360. Being a diabetic, type 2, that w I tested mine a lot of times, and I tested noise too. Every time I tested noise, her blood glucose level was just like 190, you know, 95, 97, whatever. It, it was just normal. And, of course, at that time, we were eating just what we ate. And for Noi, that was a whole lot of vegetables, whole lot of noodles, whole lot of rice, whole lot of carbohydrates, whole lot of sugars. And she was normal. Yeah, you know, she had normal sugar levels. Now, my glucose went from 360 all the way down to, like, right now, I just tested it this morning. I was at, like, 107, which is much better than 360. But last night, when we tested Noi, her blood glu glucose level was 45, and she couldn't string sentences together. And my immediate instinct was, from watching TV shows, that people would, you know, you always saw these people on TV shows talking about, I need a candy bar. My, my blood sugar's crashing. And usually some criminal in the backseat of a cop car or something who, who, who says he can't think because he needs a candy bar and, or whatever. But I, I've never had any real life experience with that because my blood sugar, if it wasn't good when I was younger, it went to point being high, which is, uh, which is different than hypoglycemia. They call that hyperglycemia when it's high. Hypoglycemia is when it's low. And, uh, The what is hypoglycemia? Yeah, basically, it's when your blood sugar levels are dangerously low, and it's it can be very life threatening, and more importantly, it can uh, it can just make you miserable. Now, here are some of the symptoms of low blood sugar. And she had most of these, and we didn't realize it. For the last few nights, usually later at night, she would, she would hold her hand up, and, and it, would, it would be real shaky, you know? And... That shakiness, I didn't think anything about. And another symptom is if somebody's impatient or they're irritable. Then the third symptom she definitely had. And that symptom's confusion. Or being nervous or anxious. And then there's also increased hunger. She had told me, even though she was eating a lot on carnivore, I mean, she ate steak last night. I think she had some shrimp with the steak, if I'm not mistaken. Then after that, she says, I'm hungry. I'm still hungry. Yeah. Then you get increased heart rate or tachycardia. And it makes you feel funny. Now, hypoglycemia, also, you can get sweating and chills and clamminess. Much like the symptoms she had when we went to a hospital for potassium, too. Now, there could be a little change in the color of your skin, a little draining of the color, or nausea. And more importantly, feeling sleepy. Just feeling 
sleeping. Now, she actually used the exact words of this next symptom, feeling weak and having no energy. When she was crying and bawling her eyes out, she said, I have no energy. I feel so tired. I'm so weak. And she's a strong woman. I mean, you know, she's like an ant. She could lift up twice her own weight, I think. And then she she went like this. She says, my eyes are, she says, I can't see. I'm not seeing good. And, and blurred vision or impaired vision is another symptom of hypoglycemia. Now, a couple nights ago, she complained that her tongue was tingling and that her lips were numb. I didn't know what to make of it, so we sort of ignored it. Another symptom of hypoglycemia is headaches and coordination problems, being clumsy. If you're sleeping, it affects your sleep really bad. You might have nightmares or cry out in your sleep. And some people even have seizures. Now, I want to talk about the levels for hyperglycemia. Level one is if you're less than 70 on a blood glucose test, 70 milligrams per deciliter, or 3.9 millimoles per liter, depending on what kind of meter you have, but greater than 54 milligrams per deciliter, or 3.0 millimoles per liter, then you have level one glycemia, which is bad. That's what she, she, she had last night, level two, which is less than 54. And that's a level that's considered a neuroglycopenic symptom because there's a shortage of glucose or sugar in the brain. And a sugar that low requires immediate action. And that's where the Narcan for carnivore comes in. Level three, you really need, you need help and you need help quick. It may even take insulin. If you, if you go into that level. Now, I wish I had known these symptoms earlier because we could have diagnosed this two, three days ago. It's being a thing. So what we do? Well, we jumped in the car. I drove down to 7-Eleven. And we went in and we got our Narcan. The first thing we did was we grabbed a few Kit Kat bars because she loves Kit Kat bars. I opened up one right there just through the empty packet down in the basket and said, eat this Kit Kat bar. We went to the soft drink, cold soft drinks. We got about four Coca-Colas and as soon as we got in the car, she had one of them Cokes. In addition, we bought one or two orange juices, little bottles of Minute Maid orange juice. We got some oranges now in the refrigerator and some bananas in the refrigerator. Now, the oranges and the bananas are for when she might test her blood sugar at 80 or 75. Or she's feeling a little down and it's down around 85. Something like that. 
I we've been discussing that at that point have an orange have a banana have them both and see how you feel you don't have to go straight for the coca-cola because that's a joke when we got in the car she drank that coca-cola and when she hit that coke within four minutes she says she felt better i mean it was quick i mean she felt she was speaking in full sentences remember we still have a communication issue we mostly speak in english and when you're not thinking clearly because of hypoglycemia stringing together a second language sentence can be a problem so what else did we get we got hershey bars pure chocolate hershey bars and she likes these magnum chocolate almond ice cream bars so we bought three or four of them and uh she also wanted some cashews so she got some cashews i don't know if that will help sugar as much as anything else but um at this point she was hungry and wanted it so we got that but our narcan for carnivore now has to stay stocked in the house we have to have ice cream we have to have coke i mean we i literally looked in this house for anything to give her sugar instantly i was hoping maybe we even had like granulated sugar that i could put into water and say drink this just put it in your stomach we didn't have any we didn't have jack shit for sugar in this house we had to run and get it and that's why i got to thinking you need narcan for carnivore because for me going without sugar in my diet lowered me from 360 down to you know 97 sometimes 95 107 100 depends on how close it was to eating or what i put in my mouth lately but i'm doing much better but she just went two months almost three months with no sugar either and she already started out a decent blood glucose levels now we just ordered some more testing strips for the blood glucose monitor expensive little suckers and uh wanted to keep that in stock so she can test if she's feeling any of these symptoms we've talked about the symptoms she feels any of them she can test herself and if it's a bit low, she can have a piece of fruit. Now, I, I know that's not the best thing for the carnivore diet. But you remember in some of my other videos, I said, I don't believe carnivore is exactly perfect for everybody. I believe there's some omnivores, there's some herbivores, and there's some carnivores. And if you spent your whole life eating high carbs, high sugars, rice, you know, noodles, fruits, all these things. She, she, you know, she was light on meat. Maybe she ate some chicken. You spend your whole life on that and then you go on carnivore. Well, your body's adapted to running on sugar levels. that's much higher than zero so your sugar drops now i test her sugar again today and we both tested together i was 107 she was 200 i mean literally 200 now she told me last night she seldom ever 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 drinks coca-cola she doesn't like it to start with too sweet uh, but between that Kit Kat bar and the Coca-Cola 
it shot her glucose up there and it's still up high today and she's running around here watering the, the landscapes and uh working outside and got all kinds of energy and smiling and feeling good so that's what we're keeping in stock and this is important if you're on carnivore or especially if you're on carnivore as a family these things you we need potassium is really important so is blood glucose you can't have too much or too little potassium and, and you really need to stay at a reasonable level for blood glucose and if you're if you're trying to lose any weight, which both of us are, then we're we're basically on carnivore, no sugar. Yeah, I'm not putting barbecue sauce on my on my chicken or on my steak that has high sugar content in it. Basically, I don't have anything in here that's got any sugar content. I don't think. I mean, yeah, if you want to count the. Uh, Heavy whipping cream I put in my coffee might have a nitinoy bit of sugar because it's it's dairy. Uh, you know, so, some people might say, well, maybe a little of the cheese that you might put on egg for an omelet might have a little sugar, maybe. Yeah, you know. but for the most part, I'm living a really restrictive sugar diet, and so she. We now know that it affects her. Believe me, she was crying like a baby, saying, I can't do this no more. I feel so bad. I feel like I'm going to die. I mean, she couldn't see. She said her vision was blurry. She was sweating. She had almost all those symptoms. Last night, she didn't have the numbness of the lips. She had that two nights ago. Told me about it. I said, that's weird. Didn't put it together. Lip and tongue. Numb and tingling. Both of them. Numb and tingling. Vision bad. Headaches. Really weak and tired. She feels so weak and tired. And for some reason, it seemed like it was coming later in the day all the time. Not so late that it would be bedtime. I'm just talking like, 7 p.m. And she normally gets up at 6, 6.30. So maybe 12 hours after being up, she was out of gas. Just totally out of gas. And she had eaten beef that she cooked up right before this episode hit her so hard. You would think by eating beef... It would spike your insulin level after eating, which I think should spike your glucose level. I'm not Dr. Ken Barry, but I'm just telling you the real truth. If you're going to go on carnivore diet and you're emptying your house of all the sugars, you should really... Consider the fact that there are times when hypoglycemia could hit and someone who's on carnivore needs a hit of sugar right now in order just to be normal. Will that knock you out of ketosis? Will it hurt your weight loss? Maybe, but you can't go through life being being dizzy and unable to think and weak, sleepy. Uh, you can't go through life like that. And the whole thing about it is, you know, that a wise man said that a rich man might worry about a thousand things. But an unhealthy man only worries about one. Think about that. Please, 
Have you experienced this? Any experiences you have, let me know in the comments. Share it with other people on this channel. Uh, I wish somebody would have done a video on this that I happened to watch and remembered. Because I could have saved no way. This didn't just happen last night. I've been seeing these symptoms going back several weeks. The longer she's been on carnivore, the better. And by the way, we checked and she lost another kilo and a half. Which she's real happy about. Just checked the scale today. And uh, all is good with that. But we got to keep our head on straight. And we need potassium and we need sugar. At the right levels. So that our body can function. So. I hope you benefited from that. Please like, share, and subscribe. Hopefully other people in the uh, YouTube universe who might be considering carnivore check this out and it'll save them a little grief that's all folks